All right. Hello, 14ers. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is May 31st, 2019. Hold on tight. I've been welling up with tears. I've been crazy excited. I, I've told the story once to my children this morning. I Then my wife, she took the day off. I was talking to her about it. I, I had a, a moment going to Walmart to get some masks today because of wildfires that are like 11 hours away from us and the winds have turned. So our city of Calgary is just covered in smoke. And my friend, my son is going out with his friends, so he wanted some masks for him and his friends. And I, there, I had a moment, uh, a Holy Spirit moment, that wanted me to get the masks first, which is pretty crazy. Um, I believe it happened, guys. Remember, we've been fussing and farting around, or at least I have with these calendars. And we've been now kind of keeping our eye on for the 4th, 5th, thinking that that 21st into the 22nd, you know, didn't take place. Hmm. Think again. Because what has happened, what was shown to me today, this morning, which was talked about by our brother Rich Herdedu, um, a couple videos back, and, you know, generally I can easily dismiss things because of Scripture, but I never dismissed it to him. I, I didn't think it was it, but I never took too much time looking at it. I had heard of it, I seen a couple things, and I left it at that. I over the But I told him, you know, it's possible, but I didn't think so because I believe this whole Son of Man thing is going to be more obvious to those who are his. But it doesn't mean it would be more obvious. It was just the way I thought it might be. Scriptures don't say it's going to be obvious. Scriptures tell us what the person is going to do, where he's going to be from, who he's going to speak to. Oh, yeah, you get ready. You hold on. I'm telling you, I'm almost ready to cry again. <laughs> Ah, oh, deep breath. I'm telling you guys, this is so incredible. So amazing. And then I got a confirmation. I'm not going to show the brother's uh, the brother's name. This is the email that we'll go through in a little bit that I'll, I'll, I'll show, uh, that I'll talk about. And he said I could use it. Um, he sent it to me about an hour ago. And when you see the confirmations connected to it, I'm telling you, this is... It has been just a Holy Spirit morning. <laughs> it was, it started the last, especially, especially in the last couple days when I've been frustrated and just saying, Lord, what am I missing? This, this, this thing down here with the sun, moon, and stars, ah. <sighs> I, when I spoke to the guy on the phone about it even, I kept telling him, I told him twice, I couldn't escape the thought of everything landing on its on the feast days. You know, how, how do, and then Tuba Shavad of this year, when Zechariah chapter 1 talks about it, and on the 21st this year, right, in the evening of, on Tuba Shavat, the festival of trees, there was a super blood red moon. And on all of these others, right, all those blood moons directly on the Hebrew calendar days. I'm like, Lord, I just, you know, the guy even wants me to, to set up a Skype and do a Skype with him for like just maybe five, ten minutes so he can show me these things and then I could always understand it. But I haven't done it yet. I expected I was going to later that day or the next day, and I just haven't done it yet. And I've been praying, Lord, what am I missing? What am I missing? You told us there's a 40 days. You gave us the day. You see, all of these books opening 
that have been getting revealed here in this ministry, every time there's a year, you know, whether it's 2024 and we see it in the Psalms or we see it in Zechariah or we see it in Acts or we see it in, in Ezekiel and all these different places, they're not the whole year. They're pieces as different angles looking in at that year of events taking place. That is what's going on. And so it's the same thing when Jesus is telling us in Luke chapter 11. It's the same. Oh, guys, you wait till you get to this. It's. <laughs> I don't know what the title of this is yet. But I don't even have a tissue to wipe my eyes because I, I know there's more coming. I don't know what the title of this is yet. But I'm sure it's something along the lines of, I believe we're already in it. The 40 days has begun. In Luke 11, where we really started to understand, because we know who Matthew, Mark, and Luke are speaking to in relation to end times. Luke to the bride of Christ, where our focus should have been for generations. Mark to the sleeping church that's left during the seals. And Judah, uh, the Jews, which is Matthew, which is during the time of trumpets. That's how it's speaking to. And when we understood that, we came to realize that there is this 40 days, which is why this is speaking differently in Matthew, Mark, and Luke about the sign of Jonah. And how that the sign of Jonah, as Jonah was, all right, as Jonah was, what did Jonah do? He walked into Nineveh, which was what? the largest Gentile city at that time, the most elaborate, the most, uh, uh, maybe not elaborate, but the, the, the one of the largest ones, if not the largest, and it was like the Mecca, if you will. It was the, not, I don't use the word Mecca, I don't mean it like that, but it was the, the, the region, the, the happening place on earth, all right? When Jonah went in, did Jonah run around, keep declaring it over and over again, and spent 40 days declaring it? Nope. He was ticked off. He didn't even want to go. He was he was fuming, right? That he had to give these words, and he went and he did it, and that was it. He gave it once. And this, Jesus says, so shall the Son of Man be. So he gives us a clue that this person referred to as the Son of Man is going to, is going to profess something and make this proclamation and he's going to do it once. And nobody, I mean, in this case, they listen. But we know in relation to end, they're not going to listen. All right? So what he's doing is he's giving, a, giving us a piece by saying going into a large Gentile nation. And this person will be the son of man. So here, see, the son of man. So now he's given us a clue, another clue. So from here, what do we glean? The next clue, which is the son of man. The Son of Man is Ezekiel in the Scriptures. So Ezekiel was the one chosen by the Lord to speak the words. So now we have over a large Gentile city, we have the person as the, the one who is represented as the Son of Man who was Ezekiel, the man chosen as the Son of Man to go and give the words that the Lord was going to give them. To speak the words. All of this ties in with the last video we did, guys. And I had no intention on doing another video right away. Then, Jesus does what next? So we have here, as Jonah, we understand that. We have the Son of Man will do. We know that Ezekiel was chosen as the Son of Man. And he's the one to go out and make this proclamation the words from the Lord that he gave him. And then, Jesus tells us, in Luke chapter 17, he gives us another viewpoint when he tells us that it will be first, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when this Son of Man makes this declaration it will be as it was when Noah entered the ark. Is it because everybody is about to be destroyed at this 40-day warning? 
No, we've said that before. He is giving us another clue to go seek out and search. He's not telling us that everything is going to be destroyed in the 40 days. He's giving us another piece of the puzzle. What was the piece in telling us this? He was telling us the day. All right? He was telling us when this was going to come. In the second month, 17th day of the month, the same day when the floodwaters were open and the selfsame day when he entered and closed the door and the floods began, the 40 days began. Jonah did what? He gave us proclamation and it was the 40 days. Jesus told us this son of man that's going to speak as Ezekiel did, who, who was chosen to speak, is going to proclaim 40 days. One time is going to just start speaking it out. And he told us what day it's going to happen. And I missed it. I had heard of it. Our brother Rich showed it to me. And this was my response to him. My response to Rich was, you see, in, in just about every case, I can dismiss like I was saying earlier, because I can go to the scriptures and I can say, you know, that's not really the case because this is what we're talking about here and here and here. So I'm able to dismiss it and show these things, usually without issue, and explain to people in comments or in emails. Six days ago, so Rich sent this a week ago, and six days ago, he was talking about it. All right? He was talking about it from what this ambassador did, who is the ambassador to Israel for the United Nations. And I told him, very interesting, brother. Of course, see, six days ago. Of course, it's possible. Do I believe that that was it for sure? And I said, I think it will be more than that, but good thinking and appropriate to be looking because it was that time frame that we were looking for. Just wait till we get there. I'm just giving you guys a little warm up. Just a little warm up to what has happened today and everything that's been revealed and then how I was confirmed by that email that came in after I had already been getting these things revealed. All right? So I email. I just sent a comment, and then I sent another email back to our brother, uh, Rich Herdedu, about this. I wasn't looking for this ambassador this morning. I was sent an email from our sister Tabitha about Israel, who's election who has to have elections again excuse me well isn't that appropriate isn't that interesting that it was declared on may 29th by the end of may 29th they were going to have to go if if netanyahu with his two week extension couldn't get it done by then he had uh, sorry if he couldn't get it done within the initial time frame the president of israel gave him a two week extension to be able to get a coalition so that out of the 120 20 seats in Israel that you that are there, he needed 61 and he couldn't do it. And the cutoff, remember that, the cutoff was May 29th, the end of the day on the May 29th. So now Israel's got to go back to their elections and have another round of elections. So it looks like Netanyahu will be finished. Is this going to affect and mean that Kushner's not going to release that first part of the peace deal on June 25th, like when they're at that conference, whether it's the 25th or 26th or however long that conference is? No, he's going to release it. Because if he waits too long and he waits till after the elections now, then it's going into the U.S. election time and Trump's going to maybe want to hold off. It ain't going to happen. They're going to release that financial part of the peace deal. Oh, and you'll see this timing, guys. You'll see this stuff coming. It was. And I believe we are. And it will be. We're there. We're there. So check this out. We're going to touch on stuff like I said. 
that's going to go back a little bit and uh, that connects to the last video as well. All right. So remember these things that I've said and get ready because everything you're going to see is going to confirm the season and the time that we're in. So, like I said, it's so smoky out. It smells like there's a forest fire next door. It is so smoky. And my friend, my son is going out with his friends. They wanted uh, those face masks to be able to breathe, right? Like surgical type masks. And I, it just so happened I bought some a few days ago for our family just for a future thing or whoever finds it at that time. And I said, no, I don't want you using those. Uh, you might need more than three or four, but, you know, I don't want you using all of them. So I said, I'll go to Walmart and I'll get some. I go to Walmart, <laughs> all right? And this stuff was already revealed to me this morning. I was already going through it and, and telling my son and breaking it all down for my son. And my daughter was kind of listening in the background. And I am just saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I'm explaining to him from the scripture directly what has taken place. And... Then I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to take a breather. Uh, I'll go get those masks because I know you want to leave, you know, around 1 o'clock or so. So I go get the masks. And this lady is, is, is stopped in the middle of the driving area at Walmart because she's waiting for somebody to back out. And I'm like, uh, you know, just go get another parking spot is what I'm thinking. Just go get another parking spot. By the time you get in that one, you'll just be parking in the other one anyways. So anyways, I make around my way around her you know, carefully because of pedestrians and stuff. And I go park and, you know, you kind of look over your shoulder and I could see this woman because you never know if somebody's going to think a certain way just because the way you drove around them or what. So I see this woman coming and there's a lot of people going in and out of Walmart. And this woman's coming and I just take notice, you know, whatever, no big deal. Thinking to myself, you know, see, you, I'm ahead of you and all you had to do is just take another parking spot. That's all I'm thinking, right? And I go into Walmart. And I see something that I wanted to get that I forgot yesterday. And I look back, because it was near the entrance, and I look over my shoulder and I see this woman again. And she seems to be walking like she, she's walking, like she's, she's determined to get something. And remember, there's a lot of people coming in and out of Walmart, and she catches my eye again. And you know what I said to myself? I have no idea why, except the Holy Spirit was confirming it. The Holy Spirit was letting me know it was from him, all right? It was from the Holy Spirit because I needed to get a move on. I was looking at this thing, and I ended up not getting it again. When I looked at the woman who was still entering at the entrance, I said to myself, she's going for masks. <laughs> Nobody in Walmart was going for masks. I was going there for masks. And I saw her walking brisk, just at the entrance, hadn't even made a left or a right, whether she was going to clothing or fruit and vegetables or whatever. And in my spirit, I said, she's going for masks. So I turn, stop doing what I'm doing, and now I'm essentially following her, but not because I'm following her, I want to go get my masks. So I follow her, and she's, of course, going in the direction of the masks. She's walking pretty, pretty briskly, but I'm just casually walking. And she's now takes the right, the, the proper turn. She goes right. She goes to the very end. She takes a left and she's going to the very back corner. And now I didn't see where she went after she took that left. Well, I go to the second last aisle because I know where the masks were. I just bought some the other day. And the ones that I want to buy my son is like the 10 pack, the larger pack. I get there. She's not in that aisle. And this is what I said to myself. This is the spirit saying, oh, she didn't know where they were. She went one more aisle. She went to the very last aisle, and she's going to come around the corner in a second. As I'm thinking that, I get to the masks, and the last pack of 15 masks, one, it's a one single pack with 15 in it, it's the last pack. <laughs> I turn around after grabbing it, and she comes walking down the aisle looking at the masks. <laughs> inside I'm going this is crazy so she starts looking at them and I start talking with her and she says oh yeah my eyes are so watery and you know I just I really need them and I had the last pack like the multiple pack one that were that were cheaper ones 
and she was going to have to get the, the $9 ones, and she was getting a whole bunch of them. And I said, well, you're going to want these ones. But I said, you know what? Uh, I said, if there's a bunch of you, I said, my son's looking for them for him and a couple friends. Maybe I'll buy two of those uh, or four of those for my friends because I don't know how many friends are going to need them. And you can have these. And she says, oh, we're going to be going camping. And there's, yeah, because there's going to be a few of us. And I said, oh, you know what? I said, you're going camping. I said, you're looking to use these things all week. And this would be a bad time to go camping. I said, but if you're going camping, you know, you should probably buy the ones you have and not the ones that I have because you're going to be wearing them pretty much all weekend. So she ends up buying a bunch of those. And I, I have a conversation with her, talking to her about how it's gotten worse here in Calgary, in Alberta over the last three or four years. And just a few years prior to that, I mean, there was we never had to deal with this. And she says, yeah. She gave me an opening. She says, yeah, and it's getting worse. And I said, this is just the beginning. And she looked at me. She's like, what are you talking about? And I said, I study eschatology, biblical understanding of end times, and uh, I, I understand quite a bit. And I said, this is just the beginning. And I said, no later than August this year, it's about to get way worse. And she just looked at me. And I said, well, here's the thing. That's okay. You've heard it now. I say this all the time to people, right? You've heard it now ahead of time. So that when you see these things come to pass, you'll know that you'll heard that you've heard it before, and you can remember what we talked about, right? So that you can accept the Lord and so forth. And uh, I was just like, "Whoa!" So <laughs> she just went in there for those, and I just went in there for them as well. And do you think maybe there was a big lineup of everybody there grabbing masks? No, that whole back section of the of the store, there was nobody except one guy a couple more aisles over. There was nobody there. But the Spirit told me going in, or as I had entered, that she was going for the masks and to go get my masks. Because see, if I had farted around looking at these other things I wanted, I wouldn't have gotten those masks, and I would have probably just gotten one pack of the other ones. But my son is going out with some friends, and a bunch of them don't have them, and they're expecting he's going to come with masks. The Holy Spirit wanted me to get those masks for my son. And it's a pack of 15. Not that he has that many friends going with him, but... If people, I said, if people ask you as you're out and about today about those masks and they say, oh, that's such a good idea, you offer them one. And he says, yes, I will. I know. Isn't that crazy? So just one of those little things. All right. Now, and this stuff has all been coming to me this morning. And after all these things, I get home and now my wife's awake. She's ready. And I'm, I'm retelling her all this stuff that's going on. And I'm showing her the scriptures and, I, and I'm just, I'm freaking out. Because I believe we're in the 40 days. They have begun. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to keep building up. You're going to see. Because we're still going to touch on some things tying into the last video that's going to make you say even more, oh my goodness, this is insane. All right? And so now I'm telling my wife, and now I've told my wife, I come back to my laptop and open up my email. And remember, I, this morning started out, with looking into this stuff about the elections after having watched what Tabitha had sent me. And the cutoff was the end of the day, May 28th, and I said to myself, now remember, I've been praying the last couple of days. I take long showers, and that's my prayer time. And then I also go on my prayers every night uh, after that in uh, on my knees in the, uh, 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 in the garage. All right? And... As I was showering for the last couple of days, I've been praying, you know, what is it that I'm missing, Lord? Okay, and then all this starts happening this morning. And when it begins this morning, I'm looking into this stuff with Netanyahu and the elections, and I see that the cutoff time was the end of the day, May 29th. And I said to myself, end of the day, May 29th? Well, that's eight days from the 21st, 22nd time frame of the 17th of IR, right? Evening to evening, 17th of IR, in, right? From evening to evening. And I thought that would be the eighth day, right? He has till the, eight, the end of the eighth day there. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I, I don't really see that it's happened on the second month, 17th day. But I'm saying, look, this has never happened before 
in Israel history, right? They've been gone for almost 2,000, but in the last 70-some years, like or 70, 71 years, they have never had to redo an election because, because the, the winner couldn't form a coalition government and get 61 seats. Never happened. First time in, in Israel history. And the cutoff was here on the eighth day. Well, you remember what else we talk about with Luke, right? Remember in Luke chapter 2 is another thing to glean in understanding to the point where we are now. Right? That whole after the tax season, there's the shepherds in the field. We don't know who they were, if maybe they've seen something, if that's taken place. They're told that they're going to see a sign of the Son of Man, right? But when he's a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothing, when he was just born, this is another type and shadow of now. And where is the 40-day connection yet again? Remember, Jonah is a 40-day connection. Noah in the ark is the 40-day connection. Here we are in Luke chapter 2, and guess what? There's a 40-day connection. What happened in this 40-day connection? After Jesus was born, and the shepherds go and see, and they're so excited, now they got to go out and start telling people what happens. After eight days, he gets circumcised. That piece is cut off. Right? The tribe of Judah, right? Jerusalem, Judah, Jews, cut off on the eighth day. From that cutoff, how many days are left of her impurity? 33 days, right? She shall remain in the days of her purification as it's spoken of where? In Leviticus. Eight, right? The eighth and the 33. It's the 40 into the 41st. It's the other 40 days. Here it is again. Another piece to glean and look at the beginning. 40 days. That warning time frame that we're looking for. So here we are with an eight day being cut off portion. Netanyahu thinking he's got it again. Couldn't form the coalition and is being cut off. You know, you can look at chapter three and what do we see? In the 15th year. Why do you think it starts off with in the 15th year? Remember, guys, this is the end time understanding ministry. It is the opening of the end time understanding of the books. Why do you think this second, this chapter three has the 15th year? Because the time of seals is over. And from the beginning of the count, now in the year 2025, the 15th year, there's what? The next seven has begun. The time of Jacob, the time of trumpets. And you can go in and see things relating to this time frame, right? Types and shadows within it. What else do we know? We know that there's going to be another 40 days towards the end. Just like Jesus was also tempted by Satan. When you go into chapter 4, what do we see? When Jesus is tempted by who? By Satan. For 40 days. Which comes at the end. When is Satan here? He doesn't get here till mid-trumpets. Is there going to be another offering, another temptation? Because Satan is going to have been controlling things. He's going to arrive after having lost his battle in heaven, him and the fallen angels, in the year 2028 in that time frame. And he's going to remain for two and a half years, destroying, they're going to, I mean, it's going to be a shredding party of people. It's going to be so wicked and vile. And Jesus will have cut himself off. He will have left after mid-trumpets, right? They go to a, a place hidden in Elam. That's right. And when he returns to defeat them, you think maybe there's another 40-day scenario? 
another kind of temptation going where Jesus just says no and wipes them out, right? Gets cast into prison, remember? So you see you've got another type in shadow, beginning, middle, and end. There it is again. You see? Now remember this 2028 thing, right? Don't forget, this is what we're going to be getting into. Remember this 2028 thing? We were we we talked about this quote unquote time traveler from 2033. Remember that? I've shown this a couple times. He shows that from now this time frame this year. He talks that he's from 2033. And he was here in 2018. And by the way, I'm not showing you this yet, but he also has a part two because there were so many questions that came in. He's still here, he says. And he's going to remain until, check this out, August 2019 when he's finally going to get out of here. And in the part two that only has like a hundred and some odd thousand views, maybe 200,000 views, the, one of the questions from this was, <coughs> are there still going to be uh, 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 presidents and all that around the world? And he says, no. He says there'll be 10 rulers. That meet with a. I'm telling you this on purpose for a reason. That meet with the AI who is so vastly uh, knowledgeable than any man has ever been, even groups of men. And it's AI. And these ten meet with the AI. And they determine through what the AI has given them. They counsel amongst it. And give it to the world. You listening? This is during the 20s. All right? Early to mid 20s. Are you listening? Right? 2021 to 2024 time frame. Before Jesus returns and boom. Even during wars, people in fighting and all these things. Yep. Yep. Get ready. Let me show you something else. I'm going to show you who is directly connected to each and every one of these things. Even going into the earth. <laughs> yep. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get back to this 40-day thing. You're going to see it. Darn right we're going to get into it. But after we did this video, our brother Jimmy, who does our website out of Montreal, he decided to look a little bit further into this brain chip that this guy talks about because we know it's one in the hand or in the forehead right this guy talks about this wonderful brain chip and he talks about the wonderful uh, chip in that right hand remember he promotes all these things as being wonderful and it's going to be such a beautiful thing we know the difference to everybody else that doesn't know scripture that doesn't understand end times of course it sounds wonderful. They're going to be able to promote healing. Right? The chip is going to have these powers to, to go and activate these things to heal you. Make you free from thousands of different of diseases. And to the unknowing person with scripture that doesn't know scripture, it's going to sound like an awesome deal. Listen to what he says. I want to walk you through some of the things that are going to happen. When I was 15 years old, in the year 2021, there is going to be a chip released that allows your brain to become an average six times more powerful than it normally is. Six times more powerful. Because this chip allows your brain to access the internet, and there is free Wi-Fi in the future that covers the entire planet. Okay. In the last video, <clears throat> we spoke about this, right? How Elon Musk with his company through his SpaceX shuttles, and by the way, I can go through a whole other thing, me and uh, our brother Keith Klein, we were going through the whole thing with the X with SpaceX and with Tesla, the T and, and the representation and with the rib, and there is a whole deep, deep, digging down, deep thing going on with what Elon Musk is doing. Do I think he's the Antichrist? No, he's building the system for the Antichrist. It's probably already pretty much built. They're just now launching it all. All right. Remember, God put enmity between the male and the female. The female, without going too far down, 
the rabbit hole. The male and the female, there's what? There's enmity, right? The, they're, they're in opposition to each other. What, what did God take from Adam to make the woman? He had to take some female part out, right? The X. Right? He had to take a female piece out of Adam to make Eve. And like I said, I'm not going to go deep down that road. It's not for today's video. But Adam, you see, ah, there's so many things. Was Adam, you know, he was called the first Adam. You know, I'm not going to go too far. I'm not going to go down that road. But just to suffice it to say that, look at what's going on in the world right now. How, how big of a population is the, is the trans, gay, and all that community? Less than a percent. Yet we are bombarded with it all over Western culture, over and over and over again. I go to the bank and they've got it on posters. I see it in commercials and it is everywhere. They got police celebrating it, fire celebrating it, cities, countries celebrating it. And it seems like it's every month, not just once, once a year. For such a small percentage? Why do you think they're pushing that? It's their agenda to push it. It's the media. They don't have to do it. If they were really Christians, Christian nations. You get it? What are they trying to do? Do you think they're trying to make the two one? Right? What happened with Adam and Eve when he took them from and made Eve, brought her back, and the two became one flesh? But it took both, right? Meaning before both there was one. You following? Takes a little thinking into that one. Okay? That's, that's another story. But you see, <clears throat> we showed this in the last video, right? On May 24th, 2019, this like within the past week or so, he launched the first 60 satellites in the 12,000 that are going to be launched that are going to surround the earth that are going to do what? Give free internet that's going to cover the whole earth. All right, we covered that in the last video. But what did he say can connect to this, to this, uh, to the internet? He said his brain chip, his brain chip, right? This is where our brother Jimmy said, "Well, let me look into this brain chip. Who, who's doing this brain chip thing?" You ready? Okay. SpaceX, Starlink, Elon Musk, Elon Musk. How does somebody suddenly get the, the rights to launch 12,000 satellites surrounding the Earth when every other nation, developed nation, has got satellites and doing stuff out there? How is it that they've all agreed? How, how does Elon Musk get to do it? Interesting question, right? Well, let's follow down that road of now that they've got this launched and it's out to the public. We even showed the video. Remember that? We showed that video... Uh, is it on this? Oh, I think it'll go over here. All right. We showed that clip of the video. This one right here. These are the satellites that were recorded from the Netherlands flying over. Man, I'm telling you, I've been getting stumped trying to get this video done. Uh, my email stopped working, everything. But suffice it to say, if it doesn't get there, we showed that clip from the Netherlands with the 60 satellites flying by. All right? Now it's probably going to just suddenly start talking while I'm doing the video. Okay, so we've got that done. We showed that, and that was amazing. Our brother Jimmy digs into it a little further, and look what he finds. See this? It's called Neuralink. Neuralink, you, you see how it sounds familiar? Starlink, right? They're calling it the satellite constellation going around the Earth. The constellation. Okay? And then you have Neuralink. That's them, guys. Oh, there we go. See, look at that. This is the space. Those are the SpaceX Starlink satellites that we were just talking about that were launched. Neuralink. Own 
by who? Elon Musk. He's working on what? The development of the implantable brain computer interface. A brain computer interface, sometimes called neural control interface, mind machine interface, direct neural interface, brain machine interface, is a direct communication pathway to enhance wired or wireless. Okay? And the event with the eventual goal of human enhancement can be described as the natural, artificial, or technological alteration of the human body in order to enhance physical and mental capabilities. And the guy said, what about the computer chip that was in his head? What did he say? The internet that surrounds the world, he accesses through his brain chip that makes him six times smarter for everybody who has it. Because they have direct access to Starlink with his brain chip. Are you freaking kidding me? Do you understand why this is out to the public now? Because they're ready. Look at this website. This is an Elon Musk company, and here's the website. <laughs> Wait till you see it. My niece could have done this website. See how slow everything is? This is it. That's the website. That's it. Neuralink is developing ultra-high bandwidth brain-machine interfaces to connect humans and computers. Wasn't Elon Musk the same one that told everybody AI is very dangerous and that everybody should be careful and maybe that they, they shouldn't be doing let me just find it here. All right? That maybe they shouldn't go down that road. Remember that? He's the one doing it. He's the one connecting it all. Every single piece. Oh, and you don't think every single piece? Do you know what other company he's, he owns? OpenAI a non-for-profit and a for-profit artificial intelligence AI research organization to promote friendly because that's the way people always sell it. We're going to help the, the, the impaired people. We're going to help be, make these things beneficial to those living in the Amazon jungle so that they can have access to the internet so that everybody can be more intelligent and have more opportunity for the whole world. That's just the way they promote it. They always have that little piece that they promote to make it look good for everybody. With founders, notably Elon Musk. And look, he even gets a 501c3. That's the same kind the churches get, right? For tax exemption. Oh, from the guy that said it's going to be dangerous. Who's building it all? Oh, do you think I'm done? <laughs> nope. Where's the other place all these things are taking place? <laughs> Below our feet? Right? Where's everybody? Where, where are all the elites and everybody going to go hide when it gets really crazy by the year 2024 when the Lamb is coming down and the Lord God hiding us from the face of Him? What? What are they doing? Hiding in the mountains. Right? under the earth well who do you think is maybe involved in doing that oh my goodness how about the boring company not like being bored but the boring company do you know what they do that's right 
The Boring Company is an infrastructure and tunnel construction company founded by... <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> if you don't, you need to pause and start watching over again. You need to go back from the first video and spend 500 hours watching all these videos. <laughs> craziness guys all now all taking place now all of it out in the open now and this apparent time traveler maybe Elon Musk's AI bot has given warning to everybody he said by 2021 it will have been up and running and that people will have the chips in their hand and in their foreheads Elon Musk has all of the control of it. Do I think he's the Antichrist? No. I believe he's building it for him. For Satan. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. <clears throat> and I'm not done yet. Wait till you see this. Thanks to the Holy Spirit guiding and leading this incredible day. And our brother Rich Herdedu for bringing it to my attention. You see, he's talking about this ambassador from Israel speaking at the United Nations. Um, he talks about how, I'm not saying, but what if, all right? He's just, you know, but what if this is what we were looking for? Just what if there is a prophet already among us, according to Ezekiel 33, last verse, right? Remember this son of man? This What was Ezekiel? Ezekiel was a man being called the son of man. Could it be that in my thinking that it was a much deeper, much more profound thing that we would see, how much of the world is going to comprehend it? How many people are going in the escape? Less than 2% of the planet. So do you think even the 2% of the planet is going to perceive the 40 days? No. You see, what did Jesus even say in Luke 17? He said he's going to be rejected. When this son of man speaks on the second month, 17th day, after Israel has completed their 70 years, he's going to be refused and rejected by all those who are listening. That's what the scripture said. That's right. That's what the scripture said. Watch this. Get ready to freak out. Israel's ambassador turns to the Bible. Many of us have heard of this, right? Do you know when this happened? Let me show you when it happened. The 17th day. Remember, he is a Jew speaking to Israel. That's the rest of the nations, right? Speaking to the rest of the tribes, we should say, in America, all right? Who is America through many of the scholars, many of the people believe that America is Ephraim, right? Is Ephraim. That Manasseh is Great Britain. They're the older brother and the younger brother would be greater. All right? That this is another type and shadow of Manasseh and Ephraim. Okay? And in Israel, it was already the 17th, but it, in the evening, it was the 17th. So the 17th of Iyar, the second month, 17th day, this is what we were looking for. All right? This is what we were looking for. Oh, man, I should show you something else, too. Just one of those weird confirmations. But this is what we were looking for for second month, 17th day, that Jesus said it would take place. And I, I thought I had maybe a little confirmation. Remember that, uh, that prison break episode? Uh, those episodes I was telling you about? Looking at uh, 
watching that ep- that series uh, in the first year, and I wanted to look and see how many episodes were left, and it had 22 episodes. And I talked about the 19th being the key, and that would be the time of the second Passover. And then it said, um, go something and then fly away. That was what it was. 19, 20, 21, 22. And if you go into the description of them, the girl's name that's in the show is her name is Sarah. And they they in the in the text, they wrote down Sarah S A R A in the first episode in this one here in the 19th in the description of the episode. In the 20th one, guess what her name was now? They spelt her name S A R A H. <laughs> I was it was another one of those things you're just like Oh my goodness. What is going on? They they just did it by accident. What happens when the Lord uses the person like Abraham? Sarah was S-A-R-A and then her name became Sarah with an H later, right? They did that in in describing the, the episodes. And it's called Prison Break and Flying Away. And it was the 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd episode. It was crazy. It was just one of those things. And so, you know, I thought it was so interesting, interesting, but again, we had understood that something had happened that day, but I just didn't think it was very significant. But Rich Herdadu thought it was. And it was this guy before the United Nations making, listen to this, <clears throat> let me read you some of it, in what can only be considered a historical speech before the world's governing authorities, Israel's ambassador to the UN, gave a surprising defense for the right of the Jewish people to the whole land of Israel, the Bible. The unparalleled presentation. Never before was there one given like this by any ambassador. All right? <laughs> Danny Danon, for the Gentiles, in case we couldn't understand, Dan, 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 delivered to the UN General Assembly just after Passover a few weeks ago, right? This is after Passover had passed, had gone viral on social media, where it had been translated into numerous languages. The 18 minute long defense of Israel's right to the land, Ambassador Dannon covered the biblical, historical, and international facts proving that the entire land of Israel, including Judea and Samaria, belong to the Jewish people. Oh, let's keep going. He talks about, he quotes from Genesis with Abraham and God, all right? He does it in Hebrew, and he does it in, and he recites it in English. You want to go watch it. It's only 18 minutes long. I was maybe going to play a little bit here, but I don't want this to get shut down just in case, all right? Listen to this. Using the Bible, there's not a lot here, all right? Using the Bible to defend the Jewish ownership of the land. You guys really need to watch it. These are things, he he, he shows what, what, Palestine had already agreed, and they said in their own words. He shows what the United Nations agreed by making them a nation, what they said in their own words. He goes to the scriptures, and he backs it all up, and he talks about pillars of approval and so forth. It's amazing. And they even call it, like never before, an unbelievable speak speech. Declaring from the word of God, What was Ezekiel going to do? The Lord was going to give him the words. And that is when he would speak them. And that he would speak them to what? To the house of Israel. In America. Oh, you just wait. It's going to get better. Okay. uh, Uh, Extraordinary move in modern political realities. All right. The ownership of the land of Israel... Until now, 
Israeli politicians have shied away from turning to scriptures in defense of Israel's claim. As expected, the mainstream liberal, liberal media reacted with scorn and rage, shaking their heads in disbelief that a government official, Israel at that, would dare use the Bible in support of Israel's right to the land. In interviews after the speech, Israel and Al, uh, CNN and Al Jazeera hosts openly mocked the idea that the Bible would have anything to do with the Jewish people's claim to a homeland in the land of Israel. Dannon, however, remained unfazed the Jewish people's ownership of Eretz Israel, remaining, uh, uh, meaning the whole land of Israel, is well documented in the Hebrew Bible and beyond. Apparently, a cryptic reference to the New Testament, the entire connection of the Jewish people to the land of Israel begins right here, he said. The ambassador pointed out that it is not only the Hebrew Bible that gives the land of Israel to the Jewish people, but it is also true in Christianity and Islam. He said, quote, The Quran itself accepts the divine deed of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. But we know from Ishmael, right? We know that there was always going to be this strife and it will be until the end. Danon told the assembly while pointing his finger directly at the Palestinian delegate, delegate, it was clear to all those watching that Danon is referring to the whole land of Israel, including Judea and Samaria, a.k.a. the West Bank. In the unprecedented speech, the Israeli ambassador went on to show that the Jewish claim to the land of Israel is confirmed not only in the Bible and Jewish history, but in the history of the world as well. The 12 tribes of Israel lived in the land for thousands of years, he said, and the largest of the tribes being Judah. And then he says, uh, Ju uh, uh, Judah, oh, sorry, when he was talking about Judah, again, staring down the Palestinian delegate, Danon declared, you all know the names Jew and Jewish. Jew and Jewish come from Judea. It was the home of our King David, and Jerusalem, the capital, is there. You guys should really go listen to it. It's 18 minutes long. Yes, 18. All right? What did he go do? He is the ambassador, as we read in Obadiah 1. There's only one, but in Obadiah. All right? Having sent an ambassador... Unto the Gentile nations, right? Unto the, uh, uh, um, what's that other word? But essentially, unto the, the heathens, right? Unto the heathens. His name is Danny Dannon. Dan, <laughs> Dan, just in case we weren't sure. This is what his name means. Dannon means God is my judge. His first name, Danny, means God has judged. God who is judge has judged. And he gave these words in this speech that was unprecedented, quoting from the scriptures, the word of God that it belongs to Israel and he did it on IR-17. Precisely, 100% precisely what Jesus was referencing to us when he told us, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man, when he shall be what? But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected. What? Be what? Rejected of this generation. CNN, Al Jazeera, all of them made fun of this guy, rejecting every claim and everything they were doing, bringing in the Bible. It was an unprecedented speech that went around the world and went on YouTube in many languages. 
And who is he addressing? The nations of the world. The ambassador, Obadiah one, whose name is Dan Dan, addressed the nations. Ring a bell, guys? Does that ring a bell to any of you? It certainly should. Remember this last video we were talking about these things? <clears throat> the last video we were talking a lot about what? We were talking a lot. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> we were talking a lot about Jeremiah chapter 4. Hold on to your horses. Hold on to your horses. We know that in the second month, 17th day of the month, Somebody as a representation or the son of man would have to go speak and make a declaration from the word of God after Israel had completed 70 years. In the last video, I was showing you guys, we were going through Jeremiah chapter 4. All right, disaster is coming from the north. Hasn't come yet. All right, it's on its way. And the destroyer of the Gentiles, the red horse rider, is on his way. White horse rider, red horse rider, they're on their way. When it begins, see, it shall come to pass at that day when it starts. The heart of the king shall perish. And the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished. And all the prophets shall wonder. Why? they weren't expecting it they didn't see it coming and then he said then ah lord surely thou hast deceived this people in jerusalem saying you shall have peace whereas the sword reaches the soul you go listen to this video i don't remember where it is when he says it but when he says it he talks about I shouldn't have clicked on it. He talks about, in 1948, the Palestinians and the Jewish people were both given the option to have a state. The Palestinians refused, and the Jews accepted. The Arabs then come and attack, and the Jews win. And everything that they've been trying to do, they offer peace. And every time they come to the table with something, it's rejected by the Palestinians with the sword. They come with war. Every time. You see that? Do you hear what he's saying? We come with peace. And every time we do, it comes with war. Palestinians come with war. You think he even realizes what he was saying? And what what does Ezekiel tell us? Oh, that's okay that that did that. And what does sorry, what does Jeremiah tell us? Ah, Lord God, thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace. And Kushner is coming out with the peace deal by January uh by June twenty fifth, in that in that time frame when they're at that conference with the Middle East people, right, with the Middle East nations. You shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches to the soul. This guy was using these words. This Danny Danon was using these words without directly quoting Jeremiah 10. Okay? You can follow this through, and then what does he say? Okay, now he's talking about how it's going to begin. Jeremiah 4.15. I, I see you. you I, could, I could feel you guys understanding what I'm saying now. For a voice declares from Dan. <laughs> that doesn't mean from, the, from the, the land of Dan. From the tribe of Dan. We were talking about this in the last video. A voice 
shall declare. And I was saying, you know, is it even possible that it's Trump the judgment, right? I was saying possibly for a voice declares from Dan judgment. Who might be the one to do that? The one whose name is Dan Dan? God is my judge and he has judged a voice declares from Dan and publishes affliction from Mount Ephraim. Who's not listed with those tribes when you get to the point of after the sixth seal when the 144,000 are sealed? There's no Dan and there's no Ephraim mentioned, right? Because Dan and Ephraim are the beginning. Somebody will declare, a voice from Dan will declare and publish affliction from Mount Ephraim. Ephraim is believed by many to be America. Nineveh was the largest, if you will, Gentile, right? The, the most hap, hip happening place at the time. And Jonah, <clears throat> excuse me, and Jonah had to go in and declare in Nineveh. He did it once. Ephraim is America, and the voice from Dan will declare it. And what's he going to do? Make mention to the nations. Dan, Danon, Danny Danon declared to the nations in an unprecedented speech from the word of God as the ambassador in America for Israel with the word of God on the 17th of the second month, as Jesus told us it would. And eight days later, Benjamin Netanyahu was cut off. Where, does, where would that put it all? July 1st as the end of 40 days. How much further from there to Israel and their Tuba Shavat time, or sorry, not their Tuba Shavat, their, um, their uh, ninth of Av, right? The 10th to the 11th, right? Which is what? We talk about this all the time, right? The books having opened, this is where we are now. Where the affliction is about to take place after they were in the 70 years. This is 2024 going into 2025. And what is it? When you fasted and mourned, everything is past tense, those 70 years. And the last time they fasted and mourned in the fifth and the seventh month, what is the fifth month fasting and mourning? The ninth of Av. The ninth, tenth of Av. From when the two temples were destroyed. It says they did it for 70 years. But then no more. And during those 70 years, what were they? They were in Jerusalem when Jerusalem was inhabited and they were in prosperity, which they most definitely are right now. And the cities thereof round about her when men inhabited Judea, inhabited the south of the plain. 
they will not get there. And what time frame is that? 40 more days. Are you following what I'm putting down? Are we listening? Are we hearing? You get it? It did happen. From Dan. Declared it to the nations. On Tuba Shavat, where Jesus himself gave us the reference, or sorry, not Tuba Shavat, on the second month, 17th day, at the direct reference that Jesus gave us, by the Son of Man, who is, who is Jewish, who would declare it to Israel, to the lost tribes. You following? Who stays? The sleeping church, the lost tribes. And that he would declare it from Ephraim to the United Nations, to the gathered nations. It was spoken about internet, translated all over the world, unprecedented speech into many nations it got translated into. And the scriptures tell us that they will not observe it again in the 71st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 76th, 77th years. And when they, when they do observe it again by chapter 8, in 2025 and 2026, it will be for a celebration. Why do you think that is? Because in the beginning of trumpets, the first three and a half years of trumpets, when Jerusalem is surrounded by the flames of the Lord, they will be rebuilding the city and the streets. It will no longer be mourning and fasting. When it's brought back, it will be for celebrating. And this is the email I got after all of this was being revealed, had been revealed to me, we have a brother in Christ who sends me a, a sad email, but exciting because his father's, I, I do believe his father's a Christian uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. So it really isn't sad. You, 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 it's sad because you're, you're mourning, you're, you're missing your family member, and in this case, his father. So it is very sad in that sense. But his dad is already there. He got to beat his son there and his family there. Wait, uh, it's not just that. This is what came in, a, a simple sentence or two, this is what came in after all of this had been revealed to me all morning and I had that experience at Walmart with the Holy Spirit and I came back and I've been on just goosebumps, go there they go again, just up and down my spine, arms lighting up like crazy, tearing up in these things. And I opened my email as if I needed more confirmation. And I've been praying about it, you know, thinking about it regularly, but seriously over the last couple of days. And knowing that I want, that I asked the Lord, please let me know if, if I'm on the right track here. Or, you know, am I understanding these things? This is the email I get from a brother who just lost his father. I'm not going to show you his name and stuff. This was 11-12 this morning. I didn't open it till an hour later, so you can see it wasn't very long ago. I opened it at about quarter after, new, after 12, something like that, when I had gotten back from Walmart. Listen to this. My mom and dad's anniversary was May 14th. Also was the day Noah entered the ark. Remember we were talking about this? Do you remember we were teaching these things, but we, we, we put it off to the back burner because, or at least I did, I'm sure many of you did, because we didn't, we didn't understand or, or see that anything had actually taken place of the significance necessary according to scripture for the second month, 17th day, based on the Hebrew calendar, which the Lord Jesus himself told us to look for, yet seven days before the 40 begins. See, and it came to pass 
after seven days. You remember when we were talking about these things? And we were showing that on the calendar. When does that count begin? If it's after seven days, here's the beginning of the count. May 14th, evening to evening. May 14th. And after seven days, in here, is the second month, 17th day of the month. Second month is IR, 17th day right here. So from here to here. All right? And then the 40 days would begin. And then we know from Luke chapter 2, which we've been talking about for a while as well, that the other representation of 40 days that's there is one that for these shepherds when they went, they would see the newborn baby Jesus wrapped up and that when the eight days came, you follow? 40-day reference to another 40-day reference and eight days after at the end, right? Not at the beginning here, but at the end of this one, after eight days, his he would be cut off. His foreskin was removed. He was circumcised. Netanyahu has been cut off. And look at our brother's family. My mom and dad's anniversary was May 14th. Also was the day Noah entered the ark like we just showed. Then seven days later, right? At the end, after seven days, his father died this year, guys. So it's a very sad time. Let's pray for our brother too. Just, I'm not going to give you his name, but you can pray for him if he wants to put a comment. Brother, go ahead, place a comment. But pray for a comfort of him and his family in their time of mourning, that they can also take joy in knowing where he is and knowing that they're soon to be with him. May 14th, after seven days, father dies May 21st. When does he pass? When Dan Dan is addressing the nations with the word of God. That kind of blew my mind, he says. Then he wasn't laid to rest until eight days later on May 29th. There's my goosebumps. Just shot right up my spine and came flowing right down both arms. You understand? Netanyahu cut off time. 40 day proclamation beginning. May 14th, when the count began from Genesis. He sends me a little three-sentence, four-sentence paragraph to tell me what's going on with his family, what has just happened, and that it's blowing his mind how all these things really just stood out with what we're talking about in these times we're, we're looking at. He believed, yes, it's a personal thing, but he couldn't help but share it because of what has taken place or what has taken place within his family. And this morning... After two days of prayer, looking into something that was ending on May 29th that had never happened before, when Netanyahu was cut off, led me to the May 21st, right? That May 21st into 22nd, on the second month, 17th day, showing me that Dan Dan, publishing, declaring, proclaiming, from Ephraim to the nations, the word of the Son of Man that began on the count that Jesus told us to go see. If I received this a couple days prior, if I received this yesterday, if I received it and looked at it this morning, 
I, I didn't I didn't have it this morning, but if I had received it this morning, you see all these timings, you see how the spirit works? I believe with absolute certainty this was a confirmation for me. What does it mean? I believe the 40 days began. I believe the 40 days have begun. And we could say, well, what about the persecution? Because when we look at, at uh, Luke 21, right? I believe there's this persecution. Well, you'll never believe it. But I was sent um, uh, another email from a brother this morning, from Sean, showing he even, guys, I don't want to show it because it'll be back into that email stuff. <clears throat> when he sent this email to me, again, look at the timing of these things. When Sean sent this email to me this morning, it was about a guy in Iraq. So there was these leaders there uh, spreading the word, and they were having a conversation with this guy. They're in Iraq. And this guy had been imprisoned, and they were trying to get him to convert to Islam, and he was a Christian. And he denied, and he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do it. And they poured kerosene on him. Well, first of all, he said they threw stones at him. There's like 20 big stones, he said. But he said he never felt it. And then he said they poured kerosene on him. They said oil or gasoline. He said, no, no, kerosene. They poured kerosene on him. And they lit it. And he never burnt. This just happened in Iraq. It was posted, I think, today or yesterday. What does Luke 21 tell us? See, sometimes we think because it's not happening to us that maybe it hasn't begun yet because we, we haven't really seen it happen in our spectrum yet. What does Luke 21 say? But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. They shall persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. and shall turn to you for a testimony. Don't, don't meditate on it. Don't just don't worry. The Lord will, the, the Holy Spirit will speak for you. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends. And some of you they shall cause to be put to death. But you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And he sends me this, this piece of the quote. But there shall not a hair of your head perish for in your patience possess you your souls those are the two emails I got this morning from the person that's having these things happen with the books opening and the end time understanding being revealed <laughs> do you think maybe I should take notice all of us maybe time to take notice of this God is my judge. God will judge. God has judged, sorry. Declaring to the nations. Done on the day Jesus told us to watch for. How many people would understand it when it happened? How many people understand the end times the way it's been revealed here? Virtually nobody would understand it. And those who were there listening would reject it, as it was said. And they did. And all of this already exists and is being watched. Guys, do I, can I say, a thus saith the Lord, that I know with absolute certainty that this was that? No. But would I pay a lot more attention now? Would I start watching and praying more than we ever did? Seeking the Lord, being repentant more than we ever have? Giving thanks in all things? You have that glass of water, you have a bite to eat, give him thanks in all things? You know, you ever think that maybe some of these trials and the things that we and that people suffer is so that he can bring you closer to him? 
and keep you closer? Because if that thing let up, maybe the thing that you're to understand with him and to draw closer to him would be missed. This happened on something we understood to look for, guys. Very few of us on earth, as far as we know in the English-speaking language, I sure hope and pray that it was way more in other languages elsewhere too. We know that this time, from this point, is precisely the 13, the 14 years left of the total 21. The 13, at the end of 13, when the Lamb returns, when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives, cleans up till the end of the 14th, which is the end of 2032. He's going to return at the end of 2031, feet down on the Mount of Olives, and he's going to clean it up, and it'll all be done at the end of 32, and that'll be the end of the 14 years, the second seven, the final seven, and then it's the Jubilee year, when all lands are restored like we read in the last chapter of Ezekiel. Guys, there's no other time. There is no other time. There is no other year. And in our ups and our downs and our emotions, me included, absolutely me included, especially these last couple days, the Lord showed me this today. Right? I believe, I shouldn't say it, the Lord showed me it. I believe I was Holy Spirit led to this. Two emails backing it. One in particular. And then having that moment at Walmart, like the Spirit showing me, uh, it's me that's with you. This ministry has been Holy Spirit led leading us into these understandings, leading us into these revelations of these scriptures over and over and over, building and building and building, giving us more understanding and more understanding and more understanding. This is crazy, guys. I definitely recommend everybody go listen to this. Read this the article on it for yourself. You can see it's israeltoday.co.il for Israel One. Guys, get ready. We're here. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you and your families. Let's pray for our brother and his family, for their loss, for their for the pain of, of him no longer being here, but for the joy of of knowing where he is and that they will all soon be with him. We all will. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.